guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to finish the boucle outfit inspired by Chanel that I started with the jacket like two weeks ago. So we're going to make a skirt that perfectly fits to the jacket and the length and everything. So it's gonna be a really, really nice finished complete outfit that we are going to do or that I'm gonna show you in the very end. And I'm really excited. This skirt is totally beginner friendly. There are two slits and mitered corners in the skirt, just as there were in the jacket itself. So design-wise, it also fits together, but this is way easier than the jacket, of course, because it's just a skirt. And skirts, at least for my university and my classes that I took, were the first thing that we made, that we learned. So it's the easiest thing to make. So I hope you're gonna enjoy. If you haven't already, I just like to ask you to hit the subscribe button down below and also ring the bell to get notified every time that I post. I post on Sundays, so if you feel a bit bored in between, why not go and check out my social media as well. Links are all down in the description below. The username is the same as here on my YouTube, so just follow me, for example, on my Instagram. I am sharing lots of stuff from my life and my work and everything, so I hope to see you there as well. So with that all out of the way, let's just jump right into the video. So I already prepared everything for the skirt, I already cut out my lining and I'm gonna put the interfacing guide right here, like I did with the video about my boucle jacket Jeanette that completes this outfit. I already had this pattern, that's why I didn't show you how I made this, but this pattern is part of my first ever collection that I released earlier this year. It's actually the mini skirt that goes together with my Lucy jacket. And different than the original, the new skirt is actually gonna have two slits, so one on each side. It's gonna be a symmetrical skirt, that's the only change that I did. Also, actually that's not true, the original skirt was elastic and this one isn't, so you're gonna have to use non-elastic fabric. The slits for this skirt are actually another type of slit that I haven't shown you yet. So in my boucle jacket Jeanette video, I already showed you the slit that most blazers or jackets have either in the side seams or the center back. And I also showed you false slits that I put into my sleeves. This skirt is gonna get open slits though, that don't have two layers, but the sides just like spring open like that. So this is the third and last variation of slits. So the first thing that I'm doing is actually marking the slip points onto my dividing seams. Those are all marked on the pattern with notches. It's super important to mark them on all four slit facings as you're gonna want to stitch the dividing seam close until exactly that point. On top of marking those points, I also put pins in to help me while sewing. Because I marked the points just now, I can just pin both layers together and match them up perfectly to prepare for sewing. And now you're gonna stitch from the waistline up until that marked point where the slit starts. I have to iron the seam allowance open because that is the direction the slit facings will have to be ironed to. I am using my tailor's hem that I made and showed you in another video as well. This is super helpful for curves like these as my waist darts are in the dividing seams and therefore make a curved seam. I am using my pattern to make sure I iron the facings correctly and check there is no distance between them when laying flat on the table. Now I can continue with my back pieces. As the back doesn't lay on fold, I have to close the center back seam first. This is just a straight seam that I also iron open to reduce any bulk that a thicker fabric like the boucle I am using would cause. Once done with that, of course, I also have to close the back dividing seams. I am doing exactly the same. I'm also ironing the seam allowance open to reduce any bulk. Done with front and back now, I can continue to sew the side seams shut. 
Be aware of the zipper that we're going to put into the left side seam, left from the person's point of view wearing the skirt in the end. There is a notch in the pattern that indicates the end of the zipper, which is why I'm closing one side only two thirds of the way and the other side completely. Due to how the zipper is gonna lay in the end and of course also to reduce any bulk whatsoever, I'm also ironing all side seams open. And now it's already time to puzzle the lining together. This basically works the same as the outer layer, but you can see how the front and side front pieces have these weird cutouts. This of course makes room for the facings that are already attached to the outer layer of the skirt and they're already ironed towards the inside. So sewing both layers together in the end is going to be another exact job that you'll have to do. Just as I started with the boucle, I'm also sewing the front dividing seams together. As there is the slit, I also only have to sew until the slit notch that is indicated in the pattern. So basically just until the corner where the 45 degree angled seam starts. And I also iron the seam open. Off camera, I also close the center back seam that I am ironing open as well. To finish the back lining piece, I'm also closing the back dividing seams. And it doesn't really matter how you iron them, I just, for simplicity reasons, iron them to one side, but you can totally also iron them open. Next up is the facing. I am closing the right side of the facing from the wearer's point of view, as the other one will have the zipper. For the facing, it's the right side because it lays on the inside, right sides together with the outer layer, and therefore it's basically mirrored, if that makes sense. And I'm also ironing the seam allowance open to reduce any bulk again. I am then also closing the right side seam of my lining, same reason, to be able to put the facing on the dividing seam of my lining. Once done with that, it's only one step before we can actually put lining and outer layer together. I'm just simply ironing the waistline right there to make it look a little nicer inside. But the last step is to sew the other side seam together. As there is the zipper, you're gonna find another zipper notch in the lining pattern as well. You're gonna want to put the side seam together until that notch and then iron the seam allowance open as well, just as you did with the outer layer. As once you put the zipper in, it's gonna end up laying like that anyways. Speaking about it, let's put the zipper in. I open up my zipper and place the upper end right at the edge of my waistline of my outer layer. As there is seam allowance added to the zipper band, it will end up laying perfectly once sewn into place. I then work my way down towards the seam and sew the first side of the zipper into place with my zipper foot. It's easiest for me to match both sides up if I close the zipper first and then pin it in place. I also try to match up specific points that stand out to me. The skirt doesn't really have any though, apart from the waist and side seams. Once pinned in place, you need to open your zipper again to be able to sew it in place. And while sewing, I try to go as low as possible to the already closed side seam to avoid any gap whatsoever. Since my zipper was a tiny bit too long, I also back tacked uh, horizontally over the teeth, I guess, of the zipper and cut off the remaining zipper band that was too much. I give it a good press and this is what it looks like. 
Putting the waistline of lining and boucle together is possible in one go. I put right sides together and start pinning at my zipper. There should be an approximately 1 to 1.5 cm big hole at the end of the zipper in the lining. You can either sew the shut in the end or iron it and leave it as it is. That comes down to preference. I then work my way around the waistline to the other side of the zipper and pin both layers together to be able to sew. I cut down the seam allowance at the edges to reduce any bulk after I turn the skirt right sides out. I do a test and see how the zipper looks and once I'm satisfied with that, I turn it back to understitch the waistline. Sorry this clip is out of focus, but understitching just means to top stitch the seam allowance to the facing. This keeps the facing from showing on the right side of the skirt while wearing it. I just give it a good press and continue working my way down to the slits that we still have to sew. So this is how the lining is supposed to be sewn onto the facing. It's the same as for one of the sides of the slit I showed you in the center back of my boucle jacket Jeanette. I also highly recommend to watch that video as well as this is more or less part two of the whole outfit and the jacket itself is also pretty cool. So when putting right sides of the slit together, you need to make sure that all edges are pinned right on top of the corresponding ones on the other fabric. Like the corner of the facing needs to be right where I cut into the seam allowance of the corner of the lining. The top of the slit, so where you sew the dividing seams shut, need to be pinned right on top of the end of the seam of the outer layer. So there are a few points that you just need to match up perfectly. I do that with the help of a pin that I use to match up the ends of the dividing seams here, for example. Then I also measure up from the hem 9 centimeters. I already explained that in part 1, so in my boucle jacket Jeanette video that I linked for you guys in the eye and then also in the description. You're gonna find timestamps in that video and what I show here in greater explanation. Uh, that can be found in the chapter backslit, so around the 28-29 minute mark I'm explaining that measurement. So now you just want to sew that corner shut. You're going to start from the end of your dividing seam stitches on both layers, so lining and outer shell, all the way down to that 9 centimeter mark that you just did. So you're going to have an open uh, part of the hem that we're going to work with later on. You want to do exactly the same on the other side of the slit. You have to make sure though that you really, really are working very exactly because you want to have no gap in the very top, so where the dividing seam ends, between the lining on one side and the other side. So you really need to match up that ending of the dividing seam perfectly on both sides of the slit. Then you're going to want to stitch that close exactly the same way as you did for the other side and it should look something like this. Now repeat the same thing for the other side and don't forget to iron your slits nicely and flat. And then we can continue with the mitered corners that we're going to put into the corners of the slit sides. I also showed you how to make these in my previous video as also the back slit needed one mitered corner. So this is also a chapter in the other video. You can go ahead and click on that for a greater explanation. But basically what I'm doing is I am folding the corners in a diagonal way and then also cutting off the excess and therefore having a diagonal seam that once you turn it over really makes a nice corner without any bulk without any ugly seams or whatsoever so it's a really really nice way for a nice finish for corners 
that you might want to use for your projects in the future as well. So this is definitely something that you should know how to do. The last step is to fix the hem into place. For that I am turning up the facing. I'm going to add top stitches so I don't have to fix my facing onto the seam allowance in any way. So if you're not fixing your hem up with top stitches, you would need to hand stitch your hem up so it doesn't fall down when your skirt is worn. I am then going in through the front part. So I'm going in between my lining and my outer shell in the very front where the, like in between the slits and take out the back part, I guess, uh, of my hem to be able to fix the hem into place. So I am uh, machine stitching the lining in a diagonal way from the corners towards the center and then back up in a diagonal way to the corners. Uh, that's why this is like this kind of weird curved line, but this way you're making sure that there is fullness in the lining, that your lining won't awkwardly pull onto your skirt hem. This is super important. This is basically how every lining is done. And this way you can totally machine manufacture your lining without having to hand sew anything. Now, because we don't have any other opening anymore, we need to do something differently for the front piece that we're still having to, you know, sew somehow. And my way of doing this was basically because I am adding top stitches to the outer layer anyways, I thought I would just pin the lining at that line where I am top stitching. So at three and a half centimeters, I will add a top stitch. So I am pinning my lining just at the three and a half centimeter mark from the edge of my hem basically. And therefore while sewing, while adding the top stitch, I will catch the lining in the very front as well and therefore close every hole in the lining. I am not a hundred percent okay with that method because it ended up pulling a tiny bit in the front. So if you have the time, I would highly suggest to hand sew that just to not have any awkward pulling because that way I also kind of took out the fullness that I put into the lining on purpose, obviously, because that's uh, how you would construct lining. And I just completely took it out that way. So it was not really the intention, but uh, I just wanted to tell you guys what I did and what I learned from it. So if you can just hand stitch it with a blind stitch or whatever, and you should be good to go. You can't really see it while it's laying down. That's why I thought, oh, perfect, it worked out. But when I'm wearing it, and I'm gonna show you the videos in just a second, you're gonna see how it's like a tiny bit pulling upwards. So just as a disclaimer. And that's it already for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Of course, I'm also gonna show you how everything together looks like worn. So I'm gonna put some videos of me wearing the outfit, the skirt and the jacket in the very end of the video as per usual. So don't forget to give this video a like if you haven't already and leave a comment down below. You would help me out so, so much if you just feed the algorithm a tiny bit with your interaction. It's just one click or a tiny comment that you need to leave and you would help me out so, so much. If you want to support me in another direct way, you can actually go ahead and check out my Etsy store down in the description below. All my patterns that I'm showing here on my YouTube are actually on my Etsy store and so also is of course the skirt and the jacket. The jacket you already know, it's old news, but of course the skirt is also now on my Etsy store. By the way, if you follow me on my Instagram, I will notify you in my stories when all of the new patterns are up because they are most of the times also up a bit earlier than the video actually is. So if you haven't already, go follow me on my Instagram to get all the news instantly once they are out and not just every Sunday. So if you want to be really, really up to date, go ahead and follow me there. So thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you on Sunday. Bye guys!
Yo. Sopa, hey! <laughs> 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 <laughs>